I do, I do think we need a piece of paper that has all the crosses on it. I think, I think that'd be great. Yeah. Well, I've never done that before, and you see it in all the films, don't you? You see it, oh, look, uh, we've crossed out all this stuff. All the films are <laughs> about all the recordings, you know? Yeah. Or a whiteboard or something. You yeah. see it in all the Instagram posts where the bands are like, we've done the album, and there's like big X's next to everything. And then the next one is the album is delayed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The album is delayed because we forgot to track all of this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. just there wasn't made a whiteboard. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go to the shop and get some A1 piece of paper. So we came into the studio and I'm thinking like, it's going to sound good and, you know, I'll be excited to hear it, I guess, but like, I can't wait to play it live. That's more what I was like, kind of like, cool, we're going to get to that part. We're going to get through all this. We're going to start playing these songs live and I'm going to have a blast doing it. As soon as we listened to every song again, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot, like, put all that effort into writing that part. And I'm like, now I'm more excited than ever to actually hear the finished product. Hi guys, I'm Morgan Sinclair from Good Tiger. This is my big knob. Uh, we are in Middle Farm Studios, which is in Devon, which is the southwest of England. Yeah, it's a very unpresuming place to have a studio, especially of this caliber. And uh, yeah, we're just in between some hills. When we were talking about the idea of recording for a month solid, I couldn't really think of a better place. And, well, you could write that second one. But you, you couldn't write the first, I think, because it came uh, out of that strumming. No, you, you, that, you just have to hit that one for one. Yeah. And that could even have a row on it, like it too. Uh, <laughs> so it'd be... That's Yeah, with this album we kind of wanted to do it, um, you know, old, old style. Um, I remember watching, in fact I was talking to one of the other guys um, just before we got here, where I'd watched the Opeth DVDs or, you know, all the... All the, the the bands that I love, um, when you'd watch videos of them in the studio and it feels like they were there for years, just like writing and getting like, the tiniest sounds and spending days on, on just like part, like tiny parts mm. and stuff. And like, I thought that was the coolest. That new section is, is the bee's knees, I think. Weren't there before. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That I've gotten away with some of the bills in this song mm -hmm. that I really wanted to be there, and I thought people were gonna fight me on really hard, and I'm very stuck. Oh, well, I'm gonna make it. <laughs> Challenge every fill he likes. <laughs> so, lousy <laughs> full sense of security. <laughs> <laughs> then challenge day one. everything. <laughs> um, I've been here one other time, and it's without a doubt my favorite live room I've ever tracked in. So that was, I think, the main appeal is the sound. But then also, you know, this whole place is sort of enchanting. It's, it's like completely cut off from civilization. We're like way out in the middle of nowhere on a farm. Uh, it's just really, really something. So like uh, the album's going great, mate. It's fucking nice. Like it's dead good. Like a fucking ah, oh, the drums, mate. Ah, oh, they sound so fucking good. Like that Rudiger guy's like, oh my god, he hits it so fucking hard. It's great. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm very close to drumming, uh, probably too much sometimes, as I think everyone in the band is aware of. I think it's what makes me good at it and passionate about it, but I definitely overthink things sometimes. And in general, I'm just so emotionally involved in it. It definitely is like part of my identity, which, you know, I'm confident in saying that I have a strong work ethic for drums, you know? But at the same time, I think you kind of ride a fine line there where, you know, there were definitely times on this album we were tracking where I was trying to get takes and Nolly or Forrester would be like, okay, that's cool, let's move on. And I'd kind of be like, no, it's definitely not cool. I need to get this way better. Uh, though in the end, I often think it was fine anyway. I, I think when I'm in the middle of tracking and I have that adrenaline, it's hard for me to sit back and kind of think like, yeah, this is okay. It's not until I kind of take a little break, go have dinner and all that, and then come back and listen to it that I realize it was actually fine. <laughs> I think going into this recording session with the songs that we had, it was a, I don't want to say tumultuous, but it was definitely a, a time for reflection to basically say to ourselves, like, oh, is this what we want to say with album two? Because it's kind of like, it's an important part in a band's career. Um, and actually seeing these songs flesh out in the way they have has basically made me feel very, confident at least in in the sense that i feel that regardless of what the reception is um what we've done in the studio here very much is a collective voice rather than five singular thoughts maybe kind of put together Woo! sounds sick yeah. did you guys do three or two today three but we just finished one and i haven't yet that sounds great man it. It needs to and i can uh... This, that's pumping us to hear uh, real guitars and everything. There's, there's like a real mystique for me anyway about like records that were tracked sort of in a pre-internet age where everyone was completely and utterly focused on the creative aspect of things and it's kind of being, you know, away in the country has kind of almost taken us closer to that in some way anyway. You know what's cool about all this is that, I don't know, I, when I was a kid I used to always read about bands like renting a studio and like living together and writing songs and everything and it always seemed like a really cool kind of process to, like, kind of a cool thing to do and like go through that process. I mean we came in with all the songs pretty much prepared but you still get what I would think is kind of the same vibe of just kind of being isolated. <laughs> I mean, sure, there's like people living all around here, but we're pretty far from them. And I haven't left the property in a week, pretty much. It's, it's a real nice way to make an album. Al albums are chunks of time, the time that you recorded it or, or had written it is encapsulated in that, you know, 12 tracks or however many tracks it might be. Um, and I think we've come a long way since the last one. Um, I think it feels more like we're a band for this album and that, it, you know, I think we will have a much clearer idea of what this album should sound like. So we've all written the album um, the album writing process has been much more collaborative. We've kind of done it all together, or at least more so. This one definitely feels like, for me anyways, it's the first Good Tiger album, like proper Good Tiger album.
kia 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 Elio Combs, uh, right, you know what I'm saying? He's kind of like, he can do it, right? He sings all high-pitched like a fucking goon, but he's actually pretty good, huh? Kia, 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 kia I saw the sun come up Man, that sounds like it like hits on all the best parts of the demo, but just like, it just kind of highlights them. Uh, when it came to the demos, when I record my demos, uh, I have to rec I, I live in like a really small little apartment. So I have to record them at like a much softer volume. But to, uh, but to really open up here and like really belt it out, I was, I was really happy with the results we were getting. And I think Forrester was as well. Okay, so just, uh, quaint. Yeah. Okay. Do you just want the word, uh, quaint? We're gonna see that, yeah. Okay. To be honest, I think, the finding a sound and a, a feeling that really suits Elliot's vocals. I think that's one of the things that you can't easily manipulate when, you, when you've got a bunch of artists together. You can change the way you play guitar, you can change the guitar sounds, you can change you know, the, the drum feel and things like that, but a vocalist generally has a sound that they can't easily modify. So I, f I think what they've done is they've actually facilitated Elliot's vocals in a much better way. Um, so the songs are allowing him to be the vocalist that he is best at being. Auto-tune, cut this! <laughs> From moving. From moving. Do we have Elliot front right, front and center? Front and center. Or yeah, yeah, like that? Elliot in the middle. Elliot, you're in the mids. This is when we become a boy band. Can we get some beers and like sway while we do it? Um, <laughs> this is not the Oasis documentary. <laughs> From moving. Diddy and Eagle right on the fucking guitar right like you've never seen anything like it mate he's fucking staggering me so good <laughs> Where's the black machine? Where's the line six? Yeah, where's the uh, Pod XT Pro? Where's the metal zone? I think that we all came from kind of technical and for the most part kind of metal backgrounds. And uh, uh, I think the, our first album, Head Full of Moonlight, was sort of uh, us dipping our toes into what more of a rock setting could be for us, you know, and what, and what that could represent. And I think this album is kind of a, an extension of that. It's, it's furthering that trying to move away from the heavier side of things, trying to move away from metal music, and uh, trying to kind of take on more of a rock aesthetic, I guess. This is three or 
four days of time searching. So if people don't like the time, then <laughs> <laughs> blame Dolly and Fari. CB over here. Two two days of time searching for one sound for one song. Yeah, and then we get on to the next song. We're like, oh no, we get on to the next riff. Part, yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't like that actually. Yeah, this is the most anticlimactic start. Just one of the most anticlimactic albums ever. I think it means the red one that you have. I just did, just didn't anyone that's not I bet you it takes 25 minutes to do the to, to track all your parts. For the whole album. That would be pretty cool, actually. If it was that, it'd just be like, I'm done. Um, I'm not like, we'll see. 20, I think I've been playing that for so long that there were times when I was just being like, why are my fingers moving? Ready? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a hev heavily technical record in terms of the performances and stuff. They wanted to steer away from a traditional um, clinical kind of let's metal sound. Let's say that doing it in a space like doing the whole record in a space like this um, lends itself to creating a bit of a, a texture and a sound for the actual album. Yeah, that was sick. <laughs> out for the hi-hat. So there was definitely one chord on that left side. Cool. So what, that's done? That's a chorus, yeah. Listen, just to listen. That was so easy. That was a sick gent chord. <laughs> yeah, chug on that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> It's got that vibe. That Can we get by your show? It just says vibes. Sure. I'll get a tattoo. <laughs> Whatever you need. <laughs> vibe God. Vibe King, Vibe God. I'm not sure which one I'm going to mark my body up with forever. The Vibe God King. That's perfect.
Nice. <laughs> you brought a cousin to me for some uh, GRS. Mm-hmm. 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 He does, yeah. I can't say, like, spe- specifically when we're doing that, it sounded really wild. Mm-hmm. Played on that one? Sure. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. CD. There's nothing I hate more than a fat lead. Uh, uh, like the R and the O. No, so let's see. Glad is that's the last word on that really. For me, the challenge for them with the second album is going to be writing something that sounds cohesive as a band and that transcends some of their kind of individual trademarks um, and just a really good songs. And I think that they did a really good job of that. And I think particularly what the Forrester did on the, the pre-production stuff and, and all the detail that's gone into the vocals and the arrangement work and, and just the little spice racking, uh, as we call it in my band, 
uh, you know, the, the kind of just the, the seasoning on the, on the end has, has really brought those songs to a, a much higher level than they have been in the past, for sure. I tried a couple of different vibes there. I was grooving on that knoll. That, that, you hear that? You hear that groove? That's fucking impossible. <laughs> Seriously, if someone doesn't do a different cover other than the like, well. It's kind of weird. It's because it's the techie song. It's hardly techie. Dude, One, two, three. three. <laughs> Oh wait, yeah, fuck him. <laughs> one, two, three! Not even one, two, three, four, just one, two, three! <laughs> <laughs> Elliot's sick count of one, two, three! Dude. Oh man, this is sick. I can't hear any of you. <laughs> I'm really happy, I think is the main thing that I can say coming out of this, is that I'm really, really happy with how um, everything's turned out. The process at times has been difficult for everyone, I think. I think that's fair to say, is just that being in a studio and being in this environment specifically uh, feels slightly removed, feel like it could be part of a horror film where a band goes off to record in a farm for however long and then come back to a... Uh, a very different looking world when we get out. But uh, yeah, it's ultimately what's happened here, I'm very happy with. Yes, can I play what I'm absolutely positive is not the uh, part that goes under that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. One, two, three, four. Been waiting three weeks to do this. All done with that one. All done with that one. All done with that one. That one. That one. That one. So Looper. Who's that? I think we should need to re-record a lot of these There's a song that. I haven't even so heard this one. Hearing them in the mix, I feel like we just got the wrong microphone. They don't even care. Uh, <laughs> the wrong microphone. The wrong preamp. Um, you know, guys, I think Looper should just be left instrumental. No. <laughs> I'm gonna check you off later. And then I don't know. I'd love to get the team. I already would love to get the team back together for, you know, album three. Uh, so that's what I'm holding out for because this is by far the best material I've ever been a part of uh, and the best experience doing it. Um, and you know, what more can you ask for? That's where it all fades, it's like, what more could you ask for? <laughs>